Should be good. Too many mics. Too many mics. <laughs> I think we're live. We're live on YouTube. Uh, let me go back to <laughs> Facebook. Too many mice. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, I think we're good to go. There we are. There we are. Okay, good. Sorry about that, guys. We're just having issues. Gremlins in the machine. Gremlins in the machine. That's probably the best word I can use for it. It's par for the course this week. <laughs> There's not enough medication or alcohol this week, let me tell you. Um, we're good to go. He's just double checking a couple of things here. Yeah, looks like we're good to go. Excellent. Everything seems to be functioning the way it's supposed to now. Okay. Everybody got their coffee, got their tea, got their You're Baileys. Back. I'm back. <laughs> Everybody's got their Baileys. Um, pour yourself a cup of tea. Make yourself comfortable. Um, this isn't a difficult piece to paint. This one's actually a lot of fun because it's just, if there's a little bit of line work. I think the most difficult part of this is probably the lettering. That's it. It's just, this is a fun piece to paint. It's relaxed. It doesn't have a huge or complicated color palette. It's just a really easy piece to paint and it looks really great when it's done. I love this piece. Um, I've rearranged this one several times. I've changed it from a mason jar to a mug. I have changed it uh, from having two butterflies to having a single butterfly. I've added an extra stencil design. This one is so versatile. You can play with it. You can move things around. You can add things to it, take things out, and you're not really going to hurt it. It's a simple design and it's I think it's really fun and it has kind of has that vintage feel to it. You could change up the colors in this quite easily. Um, you could change it from lemons and I don't know, make it into cherries or raspberries or whatever you wanted. You could change out the fruit very easily for this one. It's super easy to do. Um, we're going to start with the stenciling. Ordinarily, I would do my stenciled background and then we would do something fun with with uh, color and glazing or what have you, or maybe even stamping, which you could do easily enough on this. But um, for this one, we're going to do the stenciling first, um, but we're going to have a base coat on, and then we're putting the line drawing on, then we're gonna stencil. And you'll see why. Uh, I've done this in a couple of other pieces, and I really like the effect. It kind of gives it a, a frames things up without getting too busy. So that's what we're going to do with this piece. Super easy, lots of fun. Before we get to the painting, we're going to talk about uh, the giveaways this week. We've got a new thing on the website. We added, uh, for the Christmas season, we added gift certificates. Um, so our giveaway this week is two gift certificates, both worth $25 a piece. And uh, Renee is going to put all of the names into his spinny wheel thingy. Of doom. Of doom, as he puts it. And he's going to make the selections for the winners at the end of today's class. So two $25 gift certificates. And there will probably be a couple of other little things in because, you know, it's what we do. So if you guys are ready to get started playing paint, so am I. Ooh, clickety, clickety. <laughs> Boom. You're good to go. Am I good to go? Am I lined up? Uh, you can bring it down, actually. How's that? Perfect. There we go. Nice See, cup of tea in the, in the shot, This is, cracks me up. I, I nearly picked this off. He's got a little piece of tape here with an X on it. <laughs> to, <laughs> to remind me to keep the thing in the shots. <laughs> it works. Does it? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so... I, this is, again, I said it's not a difficult piece. The pattern is up on the website. It, just go right to the homepage. It, we have today's class listed right on the homepage. And you can just click on the link there if you're looking for the pattern. Mm. You are gone? <sighs> again? What? What is going on? No? Oh. We're still here. We're still here. So we're going to start with the stenciling for this piece. This pattern uses two stencils. We are using, um, it's M237, which is a half inch check. 
It's a checkerboard stencil. And the other one is M263, which is this elegant corner stencil. I'm using the medium size, uh, but you can use whichever size appeals to you. I just used the medium because I felt that it filled the corners nicely. Um, although, in hindsight, I may actually go to the smaller one for this one, but uh, we'll see as time goes by. Keeps turning off. Oh. It says we're live. Yeah, it says we're live. So, so I'm going to position my stencil. Again, I like to make sure that my stencil goes off the page a little bit. And I'm going to tape it into place because I'm going to keep this straight and steady. So I'm going to put a little piece of tape in. I want to make sure that the stencil is straight. So I'm going to put a little piece of tape there to hold it in place. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side just so it doesn't move. You got some people saying that it's fine, some are... Yeah, I think it might be on their end. It might be on your end. <coughs> Pardon me. So the color that I'm going to use for this part is Bahama Blue. I know you're so surprised. I like Bahama Blue. It's my, I think it is the, the Americana color that I like the most. Although I use Ashfaltum an awful lot, I think Bahama Blue is probably my favorite color. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep in mind where our lettering ends right here. And I'm going to start in the corner because I want the outer edge to be a bit more opaque. And then I want these to kind of fade as they come in towards the design element in the center. So I'm not using a heavy hand. I'm actually using, the brush is almost dry, so there's very little paint. I'm not worried about these squares being perfect or even completely filled in. So if I only get you know, a corner, I'm good with that. And I go circular fashion and I change directions frequently. Just like so. Now, when I come to, you can see the top of the, let the word fresh right here, I'm just going to skip above it so that that square gets a little color, but I'm not going to fill these in. And I'm gonna move this piece of tape because I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm kind of coming in close to the letters, but I'm not going right up against them. I kind of want about a half an inch sort of faded out around them. So I'm going to move my stencil. Let me see how I did that. If you get a new phone, does that remove the paintbrush from your name? It shouldn't. No, it's account based. It's not device based. Yeah, as long as you log into the same account, you should be good. Yep. So I moved my stencil along and I'm going to do the same thing. As I go above that lettering, I'm just giving a little hint of color. I don't want to come too close to the lettering. Just watched three balloons land in the field below us. Perfect for my grand girl's birthday. Nice. On air balloons. So I'm going to move the stencil again. Make sure everything is nicely lined up. Turn this around so I can. Tape it in place. Crystal Hendricks asks if you have a video on how to use the Dynasty Faux Squirrel wave brushes. I don't, but you know who does is uh, Jelly Bean. There you go. Go check out uh, Jelly Beans. Uh, website and uh, I mean she's got some awesome stuff on the wave brushes she's done some phenomenal things with it is that what her website's called jelly bean um is she I think it's jelly bean yep jelly bean she does so many really cool things with the dynasty wave brushes and she paints those incredible Santas and stuff on glass. Her glass stuff is amazing. So I'm just continuing 
as you can see, I'm going sort of making a halo in and around all of the elements in this piece. So I'm going to, again, constantly making sure that your stencil lines up with the previous row. Take the brewers in the house. <laughs> So it's Karen Jones, Anne McGaw, Louise Long, Marjorie Eaton. Nice, ladies. And Thanks for Sue coming. Potts just came in. Who? Sue Potts? Sue Potts. How are things in Southern Ontario, Miss Sue? I know they're chilly here. Winter is a coming. I'm wondering who's going to be the first place in the country to get snow. A uh, winner from last week is in the house as well. Cool. LD Matt. Yeah. She got her goodies this week. That's great to know that the post is moving smoothly. Deanna Spindlehurst. Deanna should have her goodies this week. My goodies arrived from in record time. I was so excited. <laughs> there you go. That answers Good. that question. <laughs> I'm glad. And of course, the lovely Linda Sofranco and Sheila Landry. Miss Sheila. Linda. God love her. I'm pretty sure I saw Jessica. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> Miss Linda was the first person to order this pattern. Oh, <laughs> I don't she? even think I had it, had the post up yet. She was ordering the pattern. God <laughs> love you. So I'm just going to continue around. And again, I'm, I'm keeping these squares nice and light and subtle along the bottom here. I don't want this to feel heavy, but I, it has sort of a nice vintage country feel with these light little checkerboards. I'm going to, good heavens. Hoping to have your goodie box out this week. Karen's sending more goodies. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is there cookies in that box, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Miss Karen, they look forward to your goodie boxes, my darling. Yes. Although you'd think that they never got cookies. It's the ginger snaps. She makes by she... far the best ginger snap cookies. Okay. That's true, yeah. Bar none. Her ginger snaps are to die for. I, I, I hate to say it. Uh, they are better than mine. They are better than yours. Yeah. Mine are good, but hers are... Oh, yeah. I, I still enjoy yours. I even use her recipe, and I still can't make them the same way she does. What? It's her recipe I use. Because they're, like, the best ginger snap cookies. I don't get it. So, I don't either. <laughs> Must be the water, I don't know. Maybe she's holding her tongue right. Who knows? I'm here, had to move over to YouTube. I don't know if the Facebook feed is working. It seems to be. Yeah. It seems to be doing good. So. Take the overview. Okay, so there, I've got my checkerboard in. Now, it's important to start in one corner and work all the way around, sort of clockwise or counterclockwise. That way you keep all the checks nice and straight. Or you do what I did in the first one and miss, like forget, and yeah, it didn't go well. So the second thing, uh, second stencil that we use is this one. I used this medium size in the corners. Um, I rather like it. But in hindsight, I'm, I was kind of wishing it might be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to wait towards the end and do that one. But um, I kind of like it. It has sort of a vintage feel. But, I mean, you could leave it off if you didn't want to. Didn't want to use it. <laughs> My ginger snap cookie begins with buy a bag of ginger snap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Molly Ann stocks. Uh, well, I gotta tell you, Molly Ann, Karen, I, Karen, I've known Karen for dog's age. A dog's age, more than thirty years. Yes. Yeah. And um, she has always made 
the most delicious ginger snap cookies. And even though I use her recipe to make ginger snaps, mine are never as good as hers. So. And Nalina, yes, it is a 12 by 12. Yep, I worked on a 12 by 12. Originally, I had done it on what I thought was a 9 by 12. It turned out to be an 11 by 14. And I really didn't like it. It didn't seem to fill the space nicely. So um, I decided when I was repainting it yesterday, because I didn't take any step-by-step -step photos the last time, uh, that I would switch it to a 12 by 12. And this worked much better. It's much more complimentary to the design. So this worked much better. And a uh, nine by 12 actually would be probably the ideal, um, but then you wouldn't have any room for all of this checkerboard stuff on it. But um, I really like the 12 by 12. It worked out quite well. So my first color for this, um, I'm going to start with base coating my lemons. Because I'm using a yellow, I don't want it to have a greenish cast uh, when I'm putting that yellow on because you're going over black. So I'm going to put a very thin coat of warm white on my lemon. Cool. So you can do this with warm white or you could do this with uh, a little bit of gesso. I just, anytime you're painting something, especially with yellows or a high yellow green, some greens are very transparent. It's a good idea to put a layer of gesso or white underneath it just so that you get better coverage. And because those colors can be affected by something like the black very easily, and you may get something you didn't expect or want. Um, in a case like this, um, if you're using yellow over top of black, sometimes it, you'll get a greenish cast to it that you may not like. So I'm putting a layer of thinned warm white. doesn't have to be fully opaque, just enough to break up that black. Oh, oh, did the zombie come up? I thought I got rid of the zombie. You did not. I, yeah, actually, <laughs> I supposed to get rid of the zombie. Why? I feel like the zombie. It's not a zombie cookie, though. No. Get rid of the zombie because it's November. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we need what? Zombie cookie. <laughs> if I can come up with one where it's a zombie cookie wearing a Santa hat. There you go. Is the zombie going to be an elf in December? No, it's going to be a gingerbread man. <laughs> zombie. It's going to be Bob. It's going to be Bob wearing a Santa hat. <laughs> so as you can see, I am not really painting this fully opaque. I'm just breaking up that black so that we have a lighter value underneath. Because otherwise, we're going to be fighting against that that black when we put that yellow on. Don't want that. It should be a turkey. Thanksgiving's over for us. Yep. It's remembrance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we don't put up Christmas decorations or anything until after the, the 11th of November. And even then we don't put up Christmas decorations yeah. until like 10 days before Christmas. Yeah. We usually it's start the, the beginning of December, so tree doesn't go up till about the 15th. Did you get any more bob cut out? I have a bunch coming. They should be here Monday. We brought, we went through, what, 150? <laughs> uh, what brush are you using? I'm just, this is a number four filbert. I'm just using a small filbert uh, for this. A number four round will work just fine. You just need something that's going to fit that space well. That's all. Nothing too elaborate. I can't hear you. Our well, microphone's working. Might have to turn up the volume. Uh, 
I put my autumn decorations up yesterday and took down Halloween. Our Halloween decorations went up and came down within 48 hours. <laughs> um, yeah. My autumn decorations have been up since August. <laughs> because I can't wait for fall. I <laughs> Okay, summer's over. I'm done. I love the fall. It's my favorite time of year. I bought a lot of bobs. <laughs> the mini bobs? Well, I, I just ordered a bunch, too. I think I ordered another 200. Um, actually, somebody... Somebody got a painted bob in their order. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's getting a little bob. With a little thank you note on the back of them. Yeah. A pre-painted bob. So, there we go. Oh, that was Deanna. Was that Deanna? <laughs> that was Deanna Swindler. <laughs> it was. She ordered a bunch of bobs and we were short one. Yeah, so we sent her a painted one. So we sent her an actual bob. We went through so many bobs in a very short period of time. Somebody for some may reason. or may not have gotten an extra one. Yeah, because we had an odd number. Yeah. Will there be a pattern for the little bob? There will, actually. There's going to be... You guys are going to get bombarded this week because I've got about four new patterns coming out that I haven't been able to work on this week because of the computer issue. So you're going to be seeing a bunch of patterns come out and the little Bob is going to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I have a priority. I have a, a deck work project that is, is due Friday and haven't been able to do anything with it. So um, I have to get that out first thing Monday morning. So as soon as I have that finished, um, then I will be able to finish off all of the the other projects that I've got sitting here. I have ornaments sitting here. I haven't been able to get written up because computer. Uh, there's some people in here that don't know who Bob is. Where is Bob? This is Bob. Bob, Bob is a zombie cookie. <laughs> I didn't. So weird. Like, who does that? <laughs> Bob is, Bob is a long story. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. I was painting a piece last winter, just before we started all of this. Um, and it had this gingerbread in it. And it occurred to me when I looked at it afterwards that Bob was a zombie. <laughs> it had, who paints the eyes and the buttons on a gingerbread cookie white? It was just creepy. So, yeah, so Bob is a zombie cookie. Yeah. So. He just had these creepy dead <laughs> eyes. Yeah, he's got these creepy dead eyes. He should have black buttons and black eyes. For some unknown reason, I painted all of his eyes and whatnot white, and it was just creepy. So. Is our pattern going to have white eyes? You can use white. You can use white. I've kind of done a few of both. <laughs> <laughs> Intentionally, I might add. Bob is our mascot. Bob is the mascot, yeah. Yeah, he ranks right up there like the bunny leaves and bunny leaves. <laughs> I think people are you gotta watch the Easter You have to watch Easter the Easter episode. video to fully appreciate the bunny leaves. Yeah. She was a, she just wasn't all there that day. Oh. She's not there all the time. Yeah, anyway. you know, the elevator didn't go to the top floor that day. That's <laughs> Which seems to happen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some days I'm a French fry short of a Happy Meal. So, so we have a straw in here, and I'm going to do the same thing to it because it's a red and white straw. Everyone it's, loves Bob. You can't help yourself. He's kind of creepy looking, but you know, he's a he's a cookie. How bad can he be? So. There we go. And you can tell I'm not, I don't worry too much about getting this absolutely perfect because it really doesn't need to be. Um, this is just putting a coat down so that we're, 
and we have the uh, a little more opacity so and that some of these colors are going to stay quite well and then of course while you've got that warm white out it's a perfect time to put a base coat on your lemon blossoms uh, I missed the very beginning but is the original in this original pattern, isn't the background shades of blue? It is. Ta-da. This is, uh, oh, I mean, no, she's thinking of a different pattern. It's Sweet Tea is the one that's in blues. Ah. Sweet Tea. I don't have that piece here right now. Well, that one's just in white, isn't it? Sweet Tea? Yeah, that background? No, this is done with black and Bahama blue. Oh, okay, so it is blue. Yeah, but Sweet Tea has a blue background. Ah, uh, yes. Sweet tea and honey. Yeah. So, I'm oh, okay. just putting a base coat on my... This is the fun part about lemon blossoms. They're just these simple little white petaled flowers. And then they sort of have a little cup. This is a new pattern? I must get it. <laughs> this well, one is so new, it still has the new car smell. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't it just go up? It literally went up this morning. Ah. Because I, it, my computer, I just, I'm telling you. I, I'm going to call it like solar flares or something. Just so many electrical issues. Anything to do with, uh, that has a computer in it. Like my washing machine, my stove, everything just seemed to need a reboot this week. I rebooted the computer, which didn't help. Rebooted just like the, the postage machine just, just did. <laughs> yeah, the postage machine did that, did that weird thing that it does from time to time. And I don't know, just it's been a week for I can hear you. creepy, okay. creepy computer issues. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just I'm gonna stroke in these little bowls. We had a scheduled power outage from midnight till two AM last night. Scheduled power outage. The <laughs> only time we get those is early in the spring when they're doing maintenance on things. Or a squirrel gets in there. That's not scheduled. <laughs> That's scheduled. <laughs> Round here is a squirrel is a scheduler. <laughs> So I'm going to take a little bit of that warm white and we have a couple of leaves here that are going to be antique green. I'm going to put a layer of white underneath those too just to save a little bit of time. <laughs> Lemonade makes me wish for warmer weather again. Uh, I'm wearing a sweater and now I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> Holy mother. I hate hot flashes. Uh, the news is reporting solar flares. They said we would be able to see northern lights in Georgia. I haven't wow. seen any here because it hasn't been clear enough to. <laughs> but we've had just, I don't know, it's just been a weird week of electrical like computer stuff. I don't know. Cannot uh, find any antique green. I'm going to blame it on solar flares. Yeah. Solar flares and blue moons. Yeah. Or not blue moons, full moons. Full moons, yeah. <laughs> what was the most terrifying animal if it had wings? Pigs. <laughs> A lot of promises are going to come true. <laughs> yup. Okay, so I've got my... I got a little bit of white on everything here. I want to make this a little bit brighter. But you can see I'm not really putzing and fretting over things being absolutely perfect. There's no real need to. We want these to sort of have a, a painterly look to them as opposed to, you know, that perfectly painted, um, like a coloring book. I don't want them to look like a coloring book. I want them to have that sort of painterly effect. So I'm not 
putzing too much with you know crisp clean details it's not necessary so I'm going to dry this and we're going to start with the lemons I'm going to start with these whole lemons down here <laughs> full moons bring out all the weirdos <sighs> That's an understatement. I, I work security. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Weirdos come with the territory. And I've worked as a first responder. <laughs> yes. He gets it. <laughs> so my base color for these lemons is Sunny Day. This is one of my favorite yellows. It's just such a happy yellow it's nice and bright but it does have some really nice opacity so it covers quite well and it's a nice bright yellow and so this works very very well for our needs for this piece so I'm working right up to the edge of the petals so that I fill in this space really nicely now, if I hadn't used a little bit of white under this, I would really be fighting against that black and it would have quite a bit of green showing through. Um, if you mix black and yellow together, you're going to see a lot of green. Um, and I didn't want that. I wanted a nice bright sunny yellow. <laughs> Kay Reynolds, I used to manage a bar. <laughs> So yeah. she knows weirdos. Yeah, she knows what full moons mean. Yep. She also knows what uh, the day after payday. Yep. What that looks like. And the day of payday. And the day of payday. Uh -uh. Usually means you get good tips. Yep. I'm painting sweet PT. Yeah, sweet peas. No, it's so pretty with the purple and pink. I love that piece. I like the the sweet teas, sweet uh, the sweet peas piece with the teacup and the flowers. It's just I don't know. It's just pretty. I have a thing for vintage style flowers these days. Anything <laughs> vintage, I'm just feeling nostalgic. I guess. I worked as a nurse, and during full moons, all the pregnant women would be ready for delivery. Uh huh. It also brought in a lot of drunks to ER. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is about full moons. Bird droppings are bad enough. Imagine if elephants could fly. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's been contemplating that statement of yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I love this yellow. Just love it. And it's nicely opaque, so it covers well. Is that, that still that filbert? Yep. Yeah. I like this little filbert. It's great for doing a variety of things. Oh, it looks like Dynasty. What size? It's a number four. Love this one. And it is uh, the gold? Black gold, yeah. Black gold. Black gold filbert, number four. There you go. Sometime next week, I have a shipment of brushes coming. Oh, dear God. I will have riggers. I will have uh, fugly brushes and stencil brushes. Those will be in this week. We are getting pitifully low, and they've been hard to come by, so I finally got some coming in. So I'm a happy camper. <laughs> I know even the brush guys are having a hard time getting uh, brushes. So, I will have some in this week. So, for my members, you'll be able to use your, your uh, coupon code for the month of November. If you need brushes. There we go. So, that same yellow is going to be used on the, the slice inside inside the jar and on this slice up top here. And I have a an unusual way of 
painting this. You may have noticed I'm not worrying too much about that black space in between the wedges because we're going to fill that in. So I'm more concerned with getting good coverage on these segments of the lemon. But I am going to switch over to my 15 knot liner here in a minute to fill in some of these finer details in these lemon slices. What's this? Renee, my puppy is getting huge. Cane Corso. Oh. Huge would be an understatement. <laughs> yeah. We adopted her about a month ago and she has melded into the family just perfectly. She's got the most amazing sweet disposition. I have pics later if you'd like to see. Yes, we yes. would like to see. I love Corsos. The only thing you got to watch out for is their possessiveness. They have a tendency to be very possessive of things and people. Yeah. If you teach them young to let go of something, yeah. you won't have an issue. So If you don't, <laughs> you can get bit. So I'm going to use that same yellow for the rind on this lemon. I just switched over to my rigger for this so that I get a nice, nice controlled line. And again, I, I'm aiming for more of a painterly look. A painterly look? Well, yes, it, as opposed to, you know, the, the crisp, clean edges of traditional toll. Okay. I want this to look more like it's been painted and less like a, a comic book or a coloring book. Ah, uh, so you're avoiding hard lines. I'm avoiding, I'm avoiding hard edges. Yeah. yeah. There's a difference between neatness and hard edges. And this is, this will be neat, but not too hard edged. And of course it helps if you don't smear paint everywhere. Uh, will you be carrying the faux squirrel three eighths angle? Um, I'm hoping to right now the faux squirrel uh, brushes are, the parts are made in, uh, Thailand at the Dynasty factory there, at the FM brush factory there. And uh, things are slow getting across the ocean, as you know. So I'm hoping to get some of those in soon, too. I went to search for the faux squirrel angle brushes, found them on Dick Blick. Yes, Dick Blick does carry them. And so I bit the bullet and ordered it from them. No coupon code from them. No. I shouldn't say anything yet about that, eh? No. Okay. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge, something coming. Yeah. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah, we're working on something. Uh, da, da, da. Oh my gosh. Define need brushes. We always need brushes. <laughs> Will you be getting more Identa pens? Yes, I have some ordered. Those should be in any time. Yeah. And shipping charges are crazy right now. Yeah, and yeah. we're trying to keep the shipping rates as low as we possibly can. Um, I had um, a customer um, had some concerns about the fact that we don't have tracking on anything. And part of the reason for that is quite simply for us to give you a uh, postal service that includes tracking, the, the cost goes way, way up. And we try to keep our shipping as low as we possibly can, especially right now, simply because it's, it's astronomical. Most of what we ship is very small and very light and easily goes into envelopes. We, and which means we can still send it via letter mail, which keeps the cost of, sh of shipping it way, way down. And I mean, we don't, we don't make money on shipping. That's never our goal. We're trying to keep the shipping as reasonable as possible. And so far we've managed to do that. So we're just, we're trying very hard not to avoid it. So, um, of course, if you want it to go with the tracking number, um, would be happy to do that for you, but then we'll have to charge you with it, whatever the postage actually is. So it can get a little on the pricey side, so, but we are trying to keep things as, 
as low as we possibly can. Yeah. Tracking starts at about $20. Yeah. So give you an idea of the cost for tracking if you want it. Yeah. For us to give you tracking information, it either has to go um, parcel post, which then goes, it's not an envelope anymore. It goes in a box, which is then charged dimensional weight. So even if it only weighs 200 grams, you're still being charged for whatever they calculate the size of that package to be. So um, the average box goes out of here. Even the lightest is 18 to $20 Canadian just to get it out the door. And if you've got a $20 order, it's not really, <laughs> not really cost effective for you. So that's why we try to, um, we try to keep things to those envelopes. We use padded envelopes, we use bubble envelopes, whatever we can to protect your order. But, uh, Speaking of tracking, the funny thing about tracking, mm -hmm. you pay more if you want tracking in the U.S. as well. Yep. So you get you have to pay for tracking from inside Canada. Yep. Then you got to pay an additional charge to have tracking in the U.S. In the U.S. Yeah. So it's just ridiculous. So I know we're constantly looking for the most effective way to get you what you order as quickly as we can. Letter mail is the most efficient. And letter mail so far has been the most cost effective and the most efficient. So uh, anything going in a box these days seems to take a lot longer. So we're trying. That's why sometimes you'll see uh, we'll split up an order, we'll put it into two envelopes, one in a padded envelope for the things that potentially could get damaged and then flat envelopes for things like stencils and patterns and those work just fine we would rather ship it in two bundles and keep your shipping as low as possible and still protect what we're shipping uh, I'm doing a painting for a friend who lives in BC how would you ship 16 by 20 for packaging oh 16 by 20 you know what you take uh, Find a box that's relatively close to the size of your canvas and then cut the corners off. Use the corners on the outer edge on the corners of your painting and then uh, pack a larger box, lots of paper underneath, put the painting in, pack paper all the way around the outside edge and then on top of the painting. And if you possibly can, wrap the painting in something like paper or what have you before you put it in. And then make sure that it goes in a box at least a couple inches bigger than the canvas all the way around. And then that way, if it's in there nice and snug, it's not going to get punctured. It's not going to get, the corners aren't going to get banged up. It will protect it. We appreciate the low shipping rates. We don't mind waiting. I, generally, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I have one lady that's waiting for stencils. I think she's in Southern California. Um, it's been three weeks. She still hasn't gotten them. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about that. Uh, but this week, if she hasn't received them, we're sending her out a replacement because usually within 21 days, three weeks, um, you know, it's disappointing not to get your order, but honestly, there's very, once it leaves us, we, there's very little we can do about it. Yeah, and with the holidays coming up, it's going to yeah. be even worse. However, we do have a replacement guarantee. So if your order goes missing, we replace it. Everything has a return address on it. So eventually, if it's gone walkabout, it will eventually come back to us. So um, we have no issues whatsoever with replacing an order if it goes missing. Because it happens. <laughs> We know this, <laughs> and it's not your fault, and it's not our fault, but it happens. Okay. Six months old. Who's six months old? The, the uh, King Corso. The King Corso. <laughs> Best friend is a dash. Dachshund. A dachshund. Da dachshund. Dachshund. Oh, and she must be so cute. And a cat. And a cat. Yeah. They run around like the Three Stooges. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Six months, he's got the, the lanky leg, corso, teenager, <laughs> everything's playtime. Yeah. I love corsos. 
Play, playtime, food, and sleep. Yup. <laughs> yep. Okay, we have lemons. So I'm gonna dry this real quick, and then we're gonna paint some lemons. It's not unusual to feed a corso four to five times a day. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not unusual. It, uh, it takes about three to four weeks to get out here. It's always worth the wait. I'll never stop ordering. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, we ship every day. I mean, we're packing in shipping orders every day. Nothing sits very long. We make sure the turnaround is pretty quick. So I know for myself, if I order some, it drives me crazy if I can't have it right away. <laughs> <laughs> I have very much an immediate gratification kind of person, especially when it comes to art supplies. Oh my God, she eats a 50 pound bag a week. Oh, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> Just uh, you wait. I would supplement some food. You might be overfeeding. If of course I was eating that much food. I would add chicken feet to their diet. Because chicken feet's got a lot of bone in it and it actually fills them up. Yeah. So Chicken feet. Chicken feet. They're cheap. Yeah. And you get like five pounds for like six bucks. Very I don't know good. what it is in the States, but cheap like worst. Yeah. So we're going to start with shading this lemon in the background here. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of my favorite orange, orange flame. And you don't need a lot of it on the palette. Switch out fresh air. I've got it. There we go. You don't need a lot of it because you're going to thin this color out quite a bit. Because um, it is a strong one. But I like the strong colors. The reason I chose this one is because it is quite transparent. And so I'm going to put a float of that orange on the yellow, just like that. It is a very transparent orange, and so I have a lot more control over this color. And I want a little in behind that flower. She also has a Belgian Shepherd. And you have a Dutch Shepherd. <laughs> but she has a Dachshund, a cat, a Corso, and a Belgian Shepherd. <laughs> She's got her hands full. So you can see that this is just a, a subtle float. We don't need a ton of color. I do like to put a little bit on the rind in there. I'm just putting a little blush of that color on the rind. So not even a float, I'm just putting a little color on there. <laughs> you step on her foot, her mouth opens. Oh, like you. Yeah, like me. <laughs> What is a Corso? It's a big dog. Yep. It's usually meant for protecting farms and livestock. Yeah. Beautiful dogs. Beautiful dogs. Very strong. Very yep. temperamental if you don't train them well. Yep. But beautiful dogs. Just imagine a pit bull on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> it's a frightening prospect for some. Mm-hmm. So we're going to tone that float with a light float of asphaltum over top of it. Let me dry this first before I end up taking most of it off. So I've got my brush with just a little asphaltum. Okay, maybe a little more would be good. There we go. Just enough, I want to deepen this color a little bit, but I don't want it to be solid brown. So there's my asphaltum. <laughs> and I'm going to 
dry this real quick and then I'm going to put in another float in here. This little spot in here needs to be quite a bit darker than the rest. There we go. <laughs> Apparently Jessica's stuck in Christmas painting mode. Oh, that makes two of us. <laughs> I had a wee bit of fun. I'm not quite finished with it yet. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, no, don't show him yet. <laughs> He's not quite done yet, but yeah. um yeah, he, show he, that. here's a hint. Uh, yeah. I've been playing. So I have a set of ornaments and a I, I've got a couple of patterns sitting here that I've just been, I've been having way too much fun with. So I, I know, Jess, exactly what you mean. I'm in Christmas mode too. I've just, I've been having entirely too much fun with the whole Christmas thing. I'm crazy over the little red truck pattern. I love my truck pattern. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me very happy. I'm in vintage mode. I am just, I'm obsessed with this whole vintage Christmas thing I, I just loving it so in our little orange wedges here inside these segments we're going to put a little float of that orange in here Ugh, make a mess so a little bit just at the points of that lemon in each of those wedges just like that Again, I am not putzing too much with this. Don't worry about it being too neat and tidy because we're going to clean all of that up. So a little float just in the point. I'm still using that orange flame, pardon me. A little bit of orange flame in there. just like so. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one up here. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. I, I'm obsessed with green. I don't know what it is. I That new green that um, Decker Wart put out, the jewel green. I just love that tone. It's so pretty. And it kind of got me off on a little tangent the other day. And uh, so everything that I touch these days has got this rich jewel green in it. Because I'm just absolutely over the moon for that color. So now I've got that little bit of orange in the centers of this. And I've got that orange, the shading in there. And then we're going to take my other favorite yellow in the deck work line. It's this one, saffron yellow. I love this tone. This is going to give us that like pop of lemon. I, which, you know, right now everything kind of looks okay. It's lemon ish, but it's not, it doesn't have that zing. So we're going to take some of that, um, saffron yellow. Love this color. And we're going to put a float of that on these wedges and look what happens to those wedges they just now we're talking lemon i love when you put that pop of that bright yellow it's a transparent yellow so it's going to um, give you lots of zing it's big bang for your buck with this color i love it <laughs> there's all that lemony goodness is it safe to say that gnomes are the in thing now? Gnomes have been in for probably four years, I would say. <laughs> My favorite gnomes ever, bar none, are the ones that Deb paints. <laughs> Deb has just the cutest frickin' gnomes. They're so cute that, I mean, the Chinese sites are stealing her gnome designs. <laughs> they are. They're using them for those, what do you call them, diamond painting kits? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're stealing, <laughs> stealing her designs to do that. So wicked. 
So I've got that nice bright yellow over top of that, but watch what happens when I put it over top of that rind where I've got that orange. Yummy. So now we've got us a lemon. I love saffron yellow. It's great. I have too many UFOs. Unfinished objects. Oh. I will be painting fall, Halloween, and Christmas all year long. Yeah. <laughs> I've gotten no, 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 gnome burnout. Oh, really? I love gnomes. I kept calling them those damn gnomes. Because <laughs> <laughs> every time I'd open up a trend report, especially over the holidays, I was finding gnomes everywhere. It was crazy. Claudette Hunter is painting her Canadian gnome. Oh, Deb's Canadian gnome? It's stinking cute. Deb's gnomes are awesome. More green, please? I'm loving the green. I am all about the green right now. I love the green background, like I did with the truck. I just loved it. I love how it pops all those other colors. It's just gnomes are here to stay <laughs> yeah they are it's just inevitable so i'm just making sure that my yellows are nice and bright i love what happens to that orange that orange flame when you put a float of that saffron over top of it it just gets heat 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 look at that gorgeous i love it so now we've got lemons I do love how these colors look when you put that wash of saffron over top. Everything just pops. I wonder if Deb's ears are burning yet. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite gnome lately is from Lori Spelt. Oh, Lori Spelt. I love Lori's stuff. Oh my gosh. I'm asking for a phone stand with Tracy's owl. Ooh, yeah. I like the little owl in the um, the Halloween, the trick-or-treat bag. I like that one. But the one she's talking about is an old pattern. I was going to say that, Judy. I think <laughs> some neon would make it pop. Yeah? Okay. Let's try the neon yeah, then. I'm what... game. I... <laughs> I was going to say it, but... I am easily encouraged when it comes to <laughs> trying out some fun colors. Uh, I have no problem with that whatsoever. So I'm going to grab, holy hockey pucks, Batman. Wow. Very yellow. That's retina burning. Yeah. Brace yourself, Effie. Woo! Oh, I love it. Look at that. Whoa, does that yellow pop? <laughs> I gotta put some on the slices now. <laughs> See, ooh, I have—I don't know what it is about these neons, but I just love them. What was the first yellow color Tracy used? Sunny day, which is this one. It's a more opaque, sunny yellow. It's the first one I used, and then that was our base coat. Then we added a little of that orange flame. That's our shading color in this background and in that little bit towards the center points on the the wedges. And then I floated over everything, put a wash over everything with this saffron yellow. That's what gives us that real pop of yellow. And then just for giggles, uh, decided to uh, add a punch of this scorching yellow over top of it. My eyes. <laughs> and hey, no complaining you. <laughs> So that little bit of scorching yellow, I love it. Look at that. Looks great over top of that. Louis Long, you need to start adding neons to all your patterns now. I love the punch. I think that's what I like. I like that zing of color, you know, that little pop. It's awesome. You got to be used in the right spot. That's the only yeah. issue with them. That's fact. But it's just such a great zing of color. You know, it really elevates or amplifies some of the color that you put in. 
Okay. So I'm going to dry these lemons. And then this is, the, I think this is the fun part. We're going to take this a little bit of warm white and a liner brush. And this is where I get to clean up a whole bunch of things. This is where everything sort of gets tidied up, for lack of a better term. I need my magic juice. When life gives you lemons, paint them. Make margaritas. Make margaritas. <laughs> That's limes though, right? I think lemon and lime, yeah. Limes and margarita, lemons and lemonade. Vodka. Either way, without a little sugar, your tequila is going to suck. Or salt. Or salt. So I've thinned out a little bit of warm white. And this is where I am going to put that pith in. What? Pith. 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 <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> pith. <laughs> The pith is the white portion between the rind and the body of the fruit, you knucklehead. <laughs> uh, I thought somebody with a lisp had to go to the bathroom. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to avoid that, but... <laughs> I apologize to anybody who has a lip. lisp. Lisp? <laughs> I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Ass. <laughs> so I, this is where I take a little my favorite liner brush and we're just going to paint in the pith <laughs> <laughs> you can't say it without doing the list <laughs> well you can't say it without it anyway <laughs> it's pith so so it's that white bit the white membrane and the white fibrous element between the rind and the body of the lemon. So I'm just using a liner brush to stroke in that white. And that has two benefits to doing it after the fact, is that it also lets you clean up and tidy up a few of the elements. So now we've got a nice tidy lemon. And it has more of that, what I call painterly effect. It doesn't have that heavily structured or hard edged feel to it. So, so you can clean up and fix all those little elements. So now we have a nice little slice of lemon. Okay, Reynolds, when life gives you lemons, add vodka. Yep, I'm with her. And there's a few people in here who thought you had a lisp when you said that. No, nope, it's pith. <laughs> Uh, honestly thought Tracy had a lisp there for a moment. <laughs> Piff. Piff. <laughs> I thought you tried to say pit. No. Not at all. So there is our pretty little slice of lemon. I'm going to do the same thing to this. This just cleans everything up really nicely. It's a neat way of doing it. It's effective. And it kills a couple of birds with one stone. Okay, quit pithing around. <laughs> oh my gosh. You started it. A lemon was the first thing I painted 40 years ago. Wow. First thing I painted. I'm trying to think. It was a yellow rose. Oh, wow. Uh, I painted it with my very first teacher, Joanne Johnson. And Joanne McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. I don't know why that name reminded me of Body Break from the 90s. I don't know. Joanne Johnson? Is that what reminded you? 
Matt Johnson and then yeah. something in the cloud. <laughs> God. Body break! Uh -huh. If you're Canadian, you know what that is. Uh, is that a Dynasty liner you're using? I, it is. This is a 15 aught Micron, Dynasty Micron. It's an extra long detail liner. It's one of my favorites. It's a very comfortable brush to hold. It is not so long that it's difficult to handle, uh, but it is long enough that you can do some really nice detail work with it. It has great flexibility. It's easy to control. And surprisingly, for a liner brush, it holds a fair amount of paint. Sheila Landry says, I painted a kitty caper from Marlene Stevens' book. Hmm. Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod, yes. Hal Johnson. <laughs> I love it. Uh -uh. I'm just cleaning up a couple of little things that I'm not pleased with. Um, mainly just some of these dark lines I'm not happy with, so I'm just cleaning them up. And I'm doing that with a little bit of the base color that I used, which was that sunny day. I just want to clean that up so that we get a nicer finish. We can come back in with a little bit of um, saffron yellow and brighten it as needed. But I just wanted to clean that up a little bit because I didn't like it. Here we go. So now we got that. Now we're going to come up there to this one up top. Eesh. I'm batting a thousand today. What's in the little glass jar? My magic juice, that's what's in the little glass jar. It is Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze. I use this like most people use hot sauce. I put that on everything. Um, she uses it like Frank's. <laughs> yeah, use it like Frank's hot sauce. <laughs> um, it, um, I use it for thinning my paint. I use it for leveling my base coats when I'm base coating something. I use it for floating instead of water. It just gives me a tremendous amount of control over the paint. It lets me make nice transparent washes. It also makes my paint more uh, durable. And I know that we've all run into this problem. So if you are painting something that has a lot of details and you have to thin out your paint with water, to get it to flow off of the brush and you're doing all these tiny little vines and tendrils and then you go to brush your varnish on and you end up pulling some of them off. The reason for that is that by using water you have diluted your paint and you end up using so much that you separate the paint from the solids and the binders while you're really doing is laying pigment in place. and when you do that it has nothing to keep it stuck to the surface and so when you put your varnish on you end up pulling it all off. So you need to have something that is going to keep the integrity of the paint. Well I can thin my paint uh, a great deal by using this but it actually contains all the same acrylic binders and acrylic resins that my paint does but with none of the pigment. And so I am not going to end up with just pigment sitting on the surface. It helps bind the colors to whatever I'm painting. So that is one of the reasons that I use it. That and I can float like a hot damn with it. <laughs> How is it different from Joe Sonia's regular glaze? Um, this one actually dries much quicker than the standard glaze, which is why it's called a fast dry glaze, but it, it doesn't have the extended open time of the traditional glaze. It also is a different viscosity. This is very watery, whereas I find that the other glazing medium is a little bit thicker. And so this one works very well. Works just like water does, but with a much better result. You must clean your brush 
before putting it into your Josinas every time, right? I rinse it, yes. Yeah. I don't clean the brush, I just rinse it out a little bit of water. Uh, where can we purchase this medium? Josonia, you can get it from josonia.com. Uh, you can get it from um, Hofcraft has it. Um, Erica Joanne has it. If you're going to support a small business, Erica Joanne, lovely lady, by the way. She's super sweet. <laughs> Being a small business, I support small businesses, so... Oh, there's Denise Van Lukerk. Hello, Miss Nice. I think she was spending some time with her grandbabies. Oh, yeah? Put my bowl cozy to work yesterday. <laughs> Did you say magic mix? I, no, it's not magic mix. Magic mix, again, has a different viscosity than the fast dry glaze. Although I have used the magic mix. Um, I still prefer this. Okay, I'm going to try this. I'm wondering why I can't chat while I cast to the TV. Not a hot clip. I don't know what yeah, we device don't. you're casting from or... I don't know. Do you know? So I'm going to, um, I want to put a highlight on my lemons and then we are ready to move to a couple of other things. We'll come back and add some finishing touches to those at a later point. So I'm just using my uh, point blender for a dry brush and I'm using just a little bit of warm white at the top of my lemon. Right there, and I'm going to do the same thing here. It's just a soft little dry brush, nothing too over the top, just to put a, a nice little highlight on the top of my lemon. Just like that. We still have some other little details to put in there, but we're going to do that when we do the little details on everything else. So we are ready to move to our straw and it needs a little bit more white. I want to get this fairly opaque but I also want to clean up a few things. So this is where I get to tidy up and crisp up lines and edges. Is Erica Joanne's in Canada? Erica Joanne is in um, Washington State. If you're in Canada and you're looking for uh, the Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze, if you're looking for Dynasty brushes, um, you've got a couple of options. Stockade.ca carries some of the Dynasty brushes, the black gold brushes, etc. And, uh, but I don't think they carry the Joe Sonia's, but you can get the Joe Sonia from uh, countrybear.com. And they're based in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Excuse me. Mario and Ghislaine, great people, really, really helpful. Um, if you go to the Country Bear website, if you type in Creations Country Bear, You'll be able to find them. Um, if you go to their website, it's going to show up in French first. That's okay. There's a little bar at the top of the menu that says French English. Just click on the that little bar and it will switch the whole website over to English. Their shipping is very reasonable. They ship through Purolator and their, um, their shipping is very reasonable. I've had no issues with with that whatsoever with them. Their service is fantastic. They have a great selection and they're also a decor distributor. So if you're looking for any decor products, they also carry them. So that's a great place to go looking. But yes, that's who has the Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze here in Canada. 
I've known um, Mary Ellen Gillian for uh, 12 years. I've been working with them for 12 years. They're fantastic. Okay, so I got some nice little paint color on there. I'm gonna dry my straw. And then we're gonna paint some stripes onto this. Um, I have them in the line drawing, but I generally don't trace them on because I'm just gonna wing it. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my, I have a nice little um, pencil. So I'm just going to use a pencil. Now the top of my straw needs to be open, so I'm going to give it an opening. And then I'm going to go at a bit of an angle and a slight curve, and I'm going to, about every quarter inch, I'm going to put on another stripe. Just like so. And then I'm going to paint each one, or every second stripe is going to get painted with country red. Scarlet. You can use primary red. Any red will do for this. Um, I just have a liking for country red. It's my favorite red. So I'm going to use my rigger for this because I'm kind of like the control it gives me. Now I'm going to give that little stripe or half stripe I guess. Now, because I've got a nice opaque white on there, I'm only going to need one coat of red. The trick will just be making sure that that one coat of red is nice and neat. Teddy bear sight? Country Bear. Country Bear. It's country dash bear dash wood <laughs> dot com. Oh, I didn't see. Is Don Lavelle in here today? I don't know. I saw a glimpse of my cup. <laughs> is she in there? <laughs> I don't see her anywhere. No. Don is making Renee a go cup, and she sent sent me a little preview of it. I saw it. And so, yeah, it's it's awesome. I'm excited. So, there we go. I've got red stripes on my straw. Now, I could have tucked this straw in behind that lemon, but I kind of wanted to knock that lemon back a little bit. I didn't want it to be quite so... There she is. She's here. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> He's very tickled, Don. Who looks awesome, by the way. I can't so, wait to see when it's done. I got a little oopsie here I need to fix. Because I'm not happy. Hope you like the wood grain look. Absolutely! I need to fix that because it's driving me nuts. I had a black line on this lemon here that was just driving me over the edge. In a few patterns I've come across, country red is undercoated with fol foliage green. Why? Um, uh, most people will use a green under a red simply because it will help pop the red. Hmm. Um, I tend to use a white 
under reds because I want to see high saturation in reds. So I stay away from greens. But that's just, again, that's a personal preference. Um, reds are notorious for not covering well. And so a green will help. Another color that works really well under reds is a purple, like a lavender, something like that. It will help. And it keeps that red popped. But I really like the high saturation. I don't mind putting a couple of extra coats on if I have to. So I like to put white under mine. But that's, again, a personal preference. So now I have to dry my straw. And then we're going to shade this with Prussian blue. Prussian? Prussian blue, which is this really dark blue, but it is a very transparent blue. If you don't have it, Payne's Gray will work nicely too. But I tend to lean towards the more, I don't know, I just like the tone of Prussian blue. Um, I blend it out very well because I don't want this color full strength. And I'm going to float my Prussian blue along the back side of the straw. Your evil twin's here. My evil twin? Deb. Is Deb? <laughs> She's not my evil twin. <laughs> She's there. So I've got a nice shadow down the back side of that straw. Just a single float, Prussian blue is all you need. And then I'm going to put a highlight on the opposite side with some warm white. Where are you at? Are you talking about within the pattern or? Or where am I at in the province or yeah. the country or the nation, the international city? <laughs> what continent we live on or <laughs> country within that continent? So the highlight is going to come in just from the edge of the straw, about an eighth of an inch. <laughs> So I'm going to, lightest value is going to be facing that way, to the left. Deb is in the house. And then we're going to dry that. We're going to add a final highlight to this straw with a little bit of thin warm whites. Mm -hmm. And the liner brush. And so we're going to come in just from the edge of that float. I want to go right down the edge of it, just in slightly, with just a fine, thin line of the warm white. And that is our final highlight on our straw. I need to pause this. Now, we have an opening in this straw, and I need to put a little bit of a shadow in there so that we have a little extra depth, but I've just done that with a little float of Ishfaltum. And then I'm going to tone that float in the shadow with a float of thin Ishfaltum. I'm just going right over the top of that Prussian blue, just a weak float, just to tone it. And there we have our stroke. <laughs> Was Miss Deb's ears burning? They must have been. You got coffee, Deb? <laughs> I bet she does. She doesn't function without coffee. <laughs> Dynasty Micron 15 Aunt? Yes, my favorite liner brush. Ah. So now we have to work on these leaves and these flowers. Both of these work work up very quickly because we're not going to putz too much with them. So I'm going to grab my little filbert and I'm basing my leaves with antique green. Now if you can't find it 
um, avocado will work just fine. And the reason I say avocado is that it will also work very fine with that plantation pine. So you don't have to go around chasing for other colors. So if you happen to have a bottle of avocado, that will work perfectly. So I'm just putting a coat of antique green over top of my leaves. <laughs> Some very nice things were said about her gnomes. Yes. yes. I has, love Deb, gnomes. has Deb seen? Of course you showed Deb your gnomes, right? No. No, she hasn't seen them? No. <laughs> well, she's watching. I didn't know him, Deb. <laughs> Actually, I did three gnomes. Four. <laughs> Four gnomes. Yeah. Well, the other one's more of a Santa Claus. He's a gnome. Yeah. But I did some gnomes. So we'll get that pattern up soon. So <laughs> I've had just entirely too much fun this week cursing and swearing at broken stuff. <laughs> Amazing looking straw. Do you ever do, do you ever paint landscapes? Uh, sometimes. Usually Tuscan ones. Yeah, they're usually Tuscan in nature if I do, but um Because she loves Tuscan colors. Yeah. And I love Tuscany, so <laughs> Oh my god, it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> he has three brothers sitting over there, so <laughs> So I've got one coat of antique green on there. You notice that when I put my base coat on, I always paint it on in the shape of the leaf. It's not just, you know, fill in the space. I put it on in the shape of the leaf so that any brush marks that are retained, any textures that are retained, follow the shape of the leaf. And so even if you don't have a perfect opaque base coat, it doesn't really matter because I can go ahead and shade these and it's going to work. I don't need to have a fully opaque base coat. So I'm going to dry these real quick. And then we're going to put a highlight on the tips of the leaves and down the center vein and then we're going to shade them. The reason why you can't see those comments, Cindy, is we are streaming both on YouTube and Facebook. So I have two windows open and I'm seeing the chat from YouTube and from Facebook. <laughs> so yeah, it's like having two, two, two different conversations. So I'm going to highlight the tips of these leaves with a float of matcha green. And I'm thinking I might have to grab my neon green. Yes. <laughs> so it's just a little highlight at the tips of the leaves. I like this matcha green. It's a nice opaque green covers very well. So I have that little highlight at the tips of the leaves. You made jail brewer really happy. Oh wow well, so because <laughs> all she said was squee neon <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Highlight at the tip of the brush, or tip of the leaf. See? Here I go again. Um, you're going to float down the center and put a highlight on the center vein. Down to the point. Oops. Got to go in the other direction on this one. There we go. Terry Greencorn's in Dartmouth. Yes, she is. It's difficult to train your peeps to leave you alone on Saturday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> One would assume that I wanted to be left alone on a Saturday morning. I don't. 
I like my Saturdays. So I've got my highlights in place on these leaves. And then we're going to do something really simple to finish them out. I'll just dry it real quick here. Have you gotten away from using fluid acrylics? Um, I have a little bit simply because of their availability. It was difficult for anybody to get them, but they are now back in production. And so expect to see them a bit more often. That, by the way, uh oh. for the 12 days of Christmas, <gasps> one of the giveaways is a set of my favorite fluid acrylic colors. Really? Eight of them. All eight? All eight. So that's one of the giveaways. For wink, the... wink, nudge, nudge. I am so excited. The stuff we've been getting. Um, Dynasty has sent a pile of brushes for giveaways for... Yep. Uh, the 12 days of Christmas and Deckworts and Deckworts and a bunch of stuff and oh did you show them the the surfaces no the uh, snow in a tube there oh no I haven't <laughs> snow in a tube snow in a tube <laughs> really? it is it's, it's not a tube it's in a bottle it's a tube okay <laughs> Have it your way. <laughs> this is a snow writer. I'm so excited about this. It's snow text in a squeeze bottle. <laughs> tube. Squeeze bottle. <laughs> it's a tube. And it's got sparkles in it. 12 days of Christmas question mark? Saturday, December 4th, we have a special event. Yes. Called the 12 days of Christmas. So we have we're going to be painting Christmas decorations and, and ornaments on that date. And we have a minimum of 12 giveaways that day. Yeah. So bring your friends, bring your family, bring whoever you want. But we're going to have drawings all day long, all the way through the live. It's a tube. It's not a tube. It's a tube. So now I'm using... A little bit of sap green because there was a bottle sitting here and I couldn't find my plantation pine. So I'm using a little bit of sap green or plantation pine. We're going to put a float at the base of the leaves. Comme ça. Now wear a Santa hat <clears throat> for the 12 days of Christmas. That won't do them any good. Nah. <laughs> I'll wear it. You they won't wear it. see it. They, they won't see it. <laughs> But I'll wear it. What time? Same time, same bat channel. And then we're going to put... It's a bottle shaped like a tube. <laughs> What's with the tube bottle thing? <laughs> <laughs> so... Tube is a shape, yes. Yes, it's tubular, I suppose. It is tubular, yes. So I am correct. It is a tube. It is not a tube, it's a bottle. By your definition, this would be a tube. Yes. It's not a tube, it's it a bottle. It is a tube. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's a just tube tapped. is generally open on both ends. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boob. <laughs> well, there's one sitting behind the camera, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, controlling, I am the master of puppets. So I'm just shading the center vein with a float of that sap green plantation pine. When do we get a peek at the pattern for the 12 days of Christmas? As soon as I get it typed up. <laughs> <laughs> have you even painted it? I have. Have you? I have. It is all painted. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not over there. Is that over there? No. Is it that? Uh huh. Is it that? Yeah, it is. Nice. We're gonna have fun with that. Yeah, they are. It is gonna be fun. And there's a couple of freebies coming up. A little to free bottle. Pen. <laughs> it's a what? To bottle. It's a to bottle. A to bottle. A to bottle. How will twelve day get? Giveaway, giveaways work. You show up. You, you show check. up. We're going to, uh, if you uh, hit the subscribe button on the on the YouTube channel, 
uh, leave us a comment in the comment section, whether you're on the Facebook or whether you're on um, the YouTube channel. Either one, all of the names get copy and pasted into a wheel. It's a random generator that Renee has on the computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spin the wheel. And as long as your name, you are participating in the chat, as long as you are liking the channel, sharing the channel, sharing the Facebook Live, liking the Facebook Live, you're going to get put into that list for those prizes. But yes, we have oodles of goodies to give away and there's more every week arriving, which I think is so cool. Um, as it stands right now, we have brushes from Dynasty, we have stencils from Decorart, we have uh, product from Decorart, we have surfaces from Covered Distributing, Southern Ridge Trading, um, Country Bear Wood from Viking Woodcrafts, we have um, stamps from Yeah, we know. <laughs> how about now? Yes. Now? Now? How about now? Are we back? Yes. Yay! We have sound again. Did you hit something? No, I didn't hit anything. You didn't touch anything. It's just part it's, of the course this week. I think I'm just overheating that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get a standalone microphone for you and just have it like sitting right here. Yeah. Which we, we can do, do that. Yeah. Get you a snowbell or a, <laughs> a good one. So I've got all my shading in place, got my highlights in place. Now I want to add a little bit of fun to these. First thing we got to do is grab some green neon paint. Ta da! Yeah, stamps from Stampendous. That's yeah. where you cut out. Yeah, we had stamps from Stampendous. Um, and we've got like the cutest little kits from Deb at uh, paintingwithdeb.com. I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff she's been doing, but um, she's <laughs> she has the most precious uh, stamp and doodle kits. They're just amazing. And she's been doing Christmas ornaments lately. Anyway, she was uh, um, really generous and sent us a couple of kits with the pattern and the stamps and it's got everything in it. So they're they're freaking awesome. Are you breathing hot air? Well, yeah. He's full of hot air. <laughs> He's full of hot air. No, the, the microphone is actually inside our HD camera. Yeah. So. so if the camera gets warm, so does the microphone. So it yeah. overheats the microphone and then it cuts out. Yeah. But luckily I do have a little meter that tells me that it's working. So I'm going to pull a little bit of that neon into these leaves just to, I don't know, up the amperage, I guess. Ooh, I love it. A little bit of that neon green. Bad day for technology. It's This week has just been, pardon the expression, sucking. <laughs> <laughs> just sucks. It's just, I mean, my printer, we have some, I've got some really good printers in this studio. And I replaced one in the spring because my other one had just packed it in. It was just done. And I replaced it with a newer version of the same printer because I, it was, I couldn't kill the other one. It was just, it ran and ran and ran until it just wore out. And so I bought a newer version of the same type of printer and I've had nothing but issues with it. So we finally just plugged the thing directly into the computer, hoping that that would fix some of the issues. And to a certain degree it did, but now the scanners weren't working over the week. And oh, it was just one thing after another. 
So, and you can't buy a new printer, not a laser printer anyway, for love nor money right now, so. Uh, oh, somebody asked, uh, what are your favorite fluid acrylic colors? Oh, my favorites? What? Sap green, green gold, uh, cobalt teal hue, primary magenta, quinacridone magenta, <laughs> and diarylite yellow. Of course. <laughs> Those are my favorites. I use those colors all the time. And Diox Purple. So yes, we have a set of my favorite fluid acrylic colors. Um, best way to contact her is through the website. Yep. If you have a question uh, about anything, a uh, concern, uh, whatever you need to know directly from me, go to the front page of my website. Down in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little speech bubble. If you click on that, you'll be able to email me directly. I think somebody was trying to copy that down. And they're like, ah, too fast! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I. those are my favorite, favorite colors in the fluid acrylics. I can't function without those ones. Printers, scanners, washer, dryer, and yep. stove. What a week. <laughs> yep. And computer. The computer decided it wasn't going to, it, you know, it just ran home to mama. So it's been a week. I don't know. Everything's been running great on my end for technology wise. Yeah, not so much for me. I, I think mine was more a software issue than a hardware issue. But it's just. <sighs> I was ready to throw in the towel this week. So I have my leaves done. So I'm thinking before I do all of this little finishing stuff, I it's I want to base coat these flowers a bit more because I really like these blossoms to be quite opaque. And again, when I'm putting my color in, I follow the shape of the petal. Instead of just willy-nilly putting the color in, I make sure that my I follow the shape of that petal. And there's the coffee. <laughs> so the one thing I learned, um, I was doing a little bit of research on when I was designing this piece. Um, something that I learned that I found interesting about lemon flowers, the blossoms on a lemon tree, is um, they're uniquely shaped and that the center portion of the flower is just like a little cup so and it's designed specifically for things like birds and bees to just dip their beak or their proboscis in, into it so it makes sure that it's pollinated properly so it's not accidental it's Mother Nature has ensured that the propagation of this tree is going to be accurate. Just a very pretty flower. And they change different, depending on the type of lemon, the blossom is slightly different. So, which was news to me. I didn't realize there was different types of lemons until just recently. I've heard them called a number of different things, but didn't realize that there was an actual difference in the plant, not just in the fruit. So I've got a nice white base coat on these. I want these nice and bright. The original piece, I had more flowers on it. Um, I decided to dial that back a little bit. And I actually like the design much better with fewer flowers. It just it takes on more of an airy quality. It feels lighter. And so I just limited it to three little blossoms. I mean, there's nothing to say that if you wanted more, you could just easily trace a few more and tuck them wherever you wanted. It would work just fine. So I'm going to dry these. And again, I just base coated with warm white. I'm going to shade these now with a little bit of Bahama Blue. Uh, much like I do with the daisies, I, I tend to use uh, blue to shade whites. It's, again, no hard and fast rule, it's just my preference. I find that the whites look brighter if I use a blue. 
And so I'm just using a little bit of Bahama Blue and I'm floating in towards the center of the flower at the base of the petal. And I just let the color run out. So darkest value towards the center. And I want the edges or tips of the petals to be very white. I just like how this looks. I the softer that little bit of you know the light blue in the center. It's a nice contrast with that yellow. Not well, not just a contrast. It's also complementary to that yellow, um, but it makes the flowers look nice and cool. Where's soot? It's not up there. I don't know. Oh, she'll have found another spot somewhere. She's probably in there. <laughs> uh, I'm old school. What, what's the difference between fluid acrylics and regular acrylics? Oh, great question. Fluid acrylic, there's different types of acrylics. There's mid-body, heavy body. This is what's called a liquid acrylic or a, a, you know, a soft body acrylic or bottled acrylic in the this, the Decorate Americana. Fluid acrylic is like this. They are very thin and more liquid, more watery. They are also have fewer solids in them, so the colors tend to be very transparent. So when you look at the Decorate line, there's 60-some you know, colors in that lineup. There might be six that are fully opaque, six or seven that are fully opaque. Um, even the titanium white is not fully opaque. It is translucent. Um, and then there is a transparent white as well. Um, there is a Titan buff, which is an opaque sort of a cream color. And then there's um, a variety of shades of gray that are opaque as well. But as for the rest of the colors in the line, they are either transparent or translucent. So, and they are have a different body again. These are very liquid, even thinner than the Americana. I love these. These are probably my favorite paints. I use gesso when I paint with these to get full opacity. The colors are really, really vibrant. High pigmentation. They have a very high pigment load. So you get tons and tons of color. The only thing you have to remember is that the paints themselves are a lot more transparent than what you're used to. So you always have to keep that in the back of your mind when you're working with them. However, I love them because of that pigment load. The other thing is these are made with a very durable resin. Once these dry, that's it. They don't open back up again unless you have used some sort of a medium to ensure that they will. When they close, they close and that's it. They're not moving. They, these are a very tough paint. They are a higher price, obviously, than uh, the regular Americanas. These ones start at about three seventy-five, I think, and go up as high as eight or nine dollars a bottle, depending on the color, because of that pigment. These are more of a fine art paint than a craft paint. Uh, but when you start working with these, you'll never want to go back to anything else. That's that's the the hard part about them. I absolutely love these fluid acrylics. Floating with them, shading with them, doing line work with them is absolutely sensational the control that you have with these so if you have not used them order yourself a couple of bottles uh, for shading and uh, try it out because once you start working with them you're going to love them my face i love them for shading they're fantastic and they work beautifully with your americana so you don't have to actually switch out and use something else altogether you can just work with what you've got so Let's finish out our flowers. I'm going to put a little shadow on our in our little bowl there. I'm going to load up this brush with a little bit of asphaltum. Blend it out. And I'm just going to put a little shadow in the center. I've left them black, but I'm still going to put a little asphaltum in there just to shade them a bit. 
and then we're going to shade over top of that blue with a little bit of Ishvaltum. Now I've thinned it out drastically because I want this color to be really transparent. I don't want to just put you know, solid brown over top of that blue. But this is also going to shape our flowers. Hmm. A general painting question. Mm -hmm. Pansy Lavender is going on patchy today. Does it do that for you? Pansy Lavender. Um, it is a purple. It has a high white content, but it is still a purple, and purples are, tend to be a bit transparent. If you're finding that it's a little bit blotchy, put down a base of, of white or a little bit of gesso and then try it. You'll find you'll get better coverage out of it. Or even a soft gray, a very pale gray, will work really nicely for that. Purples are troublesome at times. So I'm just going to finish out the shading in the center of our little flowers. They do shape up very quickly. <laughs> uh, actually, yes, You nothing says you can't put the fluid acrylics through an airbrush. Absolutely, they go through an airbrush. You might have to airbrush. thin it out a little bit, but yep. you can throw them right through an airbrush, no problem. Yep, they atomize beautifully. They're not made for an airbrush. Nope. You, you do need something to reduce it. Yeah. Um, I generally just use a little bit of Joe Sonia's. Yeah. They but, work great. Yep. I've used acrylic solvents and water-based paints. Mm -hmm. I haven't used any of DecoArt stuff. but I love, Oh, I have. I've pushed them through. They're great. Yeah. So now, on the center of these flowers, I want to put few little yellow dots and I'm focusing around the top of that little cup but they're ooh, kind of random Actually. like that and I'm going to do the same thing to this one and you can come back and do this again with a little bit of white if you want to but it's just a little cluster of yellow and it's at the top edge of that little bowl now for the fun part. I'm going to thin out a little bit of that matcha green. Remember what we used to highlight uh, the leaves, the first highlight? I'm using a little bit of that matcha green and I've thinned it out quite a bit. And this is going to be that, that color that I use for those vines and tendrils like so. And also for the stems of these leaves. Just like that. And I'm going to put in a little stem underneath this leaf flower here. Like so. And then I do this with almost every leaf and almost everything. I like this sort of loose little scribbly line on the edges of my leaves. I just find that it softens these leaves nicely so they don't look so... The only thing I would suggest if you're going to use... are they? The fluid acrylics that are already quite milky, right? Thin, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd probably, because of the high pigment load, I'd probably just bring your pressure down rather than adjusting nozzle. Yeah. It's a very finely milled pigment, so it's not, not something I'd really worry about clogging up the gun, but uh, they also do dry very quickly. Yeah. So... Never a bad idea. Yeah, just bring your pressure down. Yep. Uh, I love that brush. I'm going to have to get me one. Oh, this 15 knot is... I love this <laughs> liner. This is... That extra long detail liner in the microns 
it's this is just a fantastic liner brush and i am not kind <laughs> to this brush <laughs> no. it takes a beating believe you me but it um this thing is just the bomb it's such a great brush fluids aren't good for base coating no they are not they're not designed for that. Um, generally, if you're going to use fluid acrylic and you need a nice opaque base coat, you're going to put down some white gesso first. Uh, but there's nothing to say that you can't just jump in and grab your favorite Americana color for your base coats and then just keep your fluid acrylics for all of the detail work and for the shading. I love them for that. A lot of airbrush paints are very transparent too. Yeah. And you still have to thin them out. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, if you're going to push that the fluid acrylics through an airbrush, you're still going to need a reducer just like you would with any other airbrush paint. So uh, I have just noticed a whoopsie. Uh-oh. Where'd you whoopsie? I whoopsie right there on that lemon. It has what looks like a pimple. That gives it character. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So I'm going to take a little bit of my base color, which is that lamp black. And I'm just going to clean up that little whoopsie. Because <laughs> I don't like the whoopsie. It did not look like a whoopsie. Um, well, it's been bugging me. So I had to clean that up because it drives me nuts. I would have said it was something for texture. No, it was where I put my finger in the wet paint. Oh. <laughs> Did you forget who you were talking to? How is Dot asleep on a couch right now? <laughs> she is out like a light. She is one spoiled pupper, that one. But that's okay. Lemons do have pimples and bumps all over. They do, but not usually to yes. that degree. <laughs> where you get your lemon okay so we've done our we've got our pretty little flowers now i rather like the the flowers here but i want to see something a little bit brighter at the edge that's cool to put that back here. <laughs> what happened to perfection is to be avoided <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I, not, agree. I, I did not go looking for perfection i just wanted a little better than I did. <laughs> so I'm going to, I want to give these flowers a nice crisp edge. So I just picked up a little bit of titanium white. You don't have to do this, but I kind of want them to. And I'm just going to put a float of titanium white right at the edge of the petal. Just because I want them to be nice bright white at that edge. Is there a neon white? I wish there was. I don't know that you can even make a neon white. But there's that. I little... don't think you can. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> so a little float of that. Look at that. Nice bright, gives us a nice bright white flower by having that little float of titanium white at the edge of the petals. Titanium is not even white. No, it isn't. <laughs> so why is it called titanium white? Because it's white made with titanium. Oh. And it is the brightest white. So I've got my flowers done. I've got my leaves done. I've got my lemons painted. A couple little things I want to clean up on my lemons, like right here. There's just a couple of spots where the paint's, you know, perhaps not as opaque as I would like. So I just want to tidy that up a little bit so that I have a nice clean line. And next is our lettering. Because I'm all about the lettering. I love the lettering. I've been waiting to do it. This, I used uh, an ombrage on this. No. An ombrage. Okay. An ombre. So essentially we're using three colors on this lettering. We're going to use white as our base coat. We're going to shade the base of the lettering with that Bahama blue. And then we're going to highlight the tops of the letters using sunny day. So we're going to have yellow, blue, and white in our lettering. But first we need to get that lettering reasonably opaque and I'm going to do that with uh, a number two rigger, and I've loaded it with warm white. 
They're all wondering about the cup. Oh, we'll get to the mug. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm keeping it to the end so that you can see how I am, how quickly it comes together. Because quite honestly, this paints up faster than anything else that we've done. So, and it, visually, it has great payoff. So I'm just basing in my letter with some thinned warm white. Just thin it enough so that it comes off the brush easily. Honestly, Therese. I have an issues today? Honestly, I am. <laughs> Can't get the brushes to work today. So there we go, that's better. Jeez Louise. So I'm just stroking in these letters. Number two rigger. I press down to open it up. So that it fills that space nicely. Now, if you're wondering about the font that I used for this one, it's actually called Country Lemonade. It's the name of the font. Very appropriate, I thought. Uh, is the rigor a dynasty brush? It is. Every brush that I use is a Dynasty brush. I have been a Dynasty brush for a brush girl for uh, since 2002. Long time. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, it's just post I did on Dot's Instagram. Oh. No sticks for Dot's, only trees. Yeah. Oh, did she hauling lumber around again? Yeah, she, she was hauling lumber the other day. <laughs> humidity, question mark? It could be the humidity. It could be. But it's not too bad right now. It's been worse. Wasn't there a snowstorm warning? Uh, yeah, the Avalon Peninsula is supposed to be getting some snow this weekend. And they're in for their first major storm of the year. So northern Newfoundland and the Avalon Peninsula are going to get it. So I love work. This rigor actually paints really really nicely and it holds a lot more paint than you'd expect and so it makes painting this lettering super easy what was the font for your truck piece where is your truck actually that one um, was actually a graphic that I bought it's not really a font I um, I've been trying to find the font because I liked the graphic and I ended up buying the rights to the graphic so that I could use it because I liked the lettering. But um, I'm not absolutely sure what the name of the font is because I haven't been able to find it yet. But I will because I'd like to use it again. Man, lots of questions today. Yeah. And a lot of new people too, which is good. Yeah. You gotta check out the YouTube channel too. Tons of information. Uh, what two colors of fluid acrylics would you suggest for first purchase? Um, always a primary. And for me, that would be uh, primary magenta and uh, cobalt teal hue. So that you've got a primary blue or a blue, which falls into that primary, and then a primary red. Why those two colors? Because you can mix purples from those, ah. and both of those, you can mix colors with those. If you can't, I mean, you can't afford to buy everything. I know that. So my attitude towards 
whenever you're trying out a new brand of paints, buy your primary colors. Buy, buy a blue, buy a red, and buy a yellow. And then from those three, you can make almost anything you need. Ta-da! What site do you get your lettering from? I use a couple of different sites, but um, fontbundles.com is one I use the most. Um, there's a number of different places. Design Bundles is another. And um, Stock Images, what's the name of that site there that sells stock images? I can never remember the name Shutterstock. of it. Shutterstock. Shutterstock, thank you. I use Shutterstock. Um, 10,000 Fonts is another one. Any lettering, any design element that I use, I make sure that I buy the license to it because some designer out there has, you know, put in some hard work and that's that's their bread and butter. So I make sure that I buy the right to use that thing, purchase the rights to use those things. I think we should give away a certificate right now. We what should. God, go, Jesus. What'd you do? A chair drop? Accidentally lowered my chair. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite sudden. So Renee's going to load up names into our wheel. <laughs> Are you eating something? No, he's not eating something. I, I was eating a cookie. Oh, were you? Why am I not surprised? <laughs> I was eating a cookie. <laughs> All the names from Facebook, all the names from YouTube. We got. He's got his little spinny wheel thing. He's gonna load you all into. Like I said, our giveaway today, we've got uh, two gift certificates to the website. Oh bam! They're worth twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars a piece, and of course, twenty-five ducks. 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 $25 piece and then of course we've got other little goodies that are going to go out with that so oh, I don't need that that's decorate string code and how did I miss the big garbage can I don't know so actually this lettering is coming together quite nicely let's see who gets the $25 <laughs> so, Mustache is itchy. Spin! <laughs> me right round, spin me right round. Like a record, baby, right round, round. <laughs> Lost sound. Did we lose sound no, again? We didn't. Sound still good? Mm. Rosalie Williams. Rosalie Williams, my dear. You've got a $25 gift certificate coming to you. So um, go to the front page of my website. Click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner of the home page. Click on that and send us your shipping information. And we will get your gift certificate and some other little goodies out to you. First thing, Monday morning. No, you still got to... I have yeah. to fill them out. But... Yeah, you got to put the the code on there for them. Yep. Rosalie Williams. So I'm going to dry this real quick, and then I'm going to show you how we do the shading on the bottom of the letters. Do this ombre effect on these letters. It's not as difficult as you think. Uh, it just takes a little bit of care to get it just so. Now I'm using a 3 8 angled shader. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. If you prefer a smaller one for that small space then by all means use it. But uh, I'm going to use the 3 8 for this. And I'm picking up a little bit of Bahama Blue. Mm -hmm. 
and we're going to go with the darkest value to the bottom and we're going to come in just slightly from the edge of the letter. And then I'm going to walk the color up like that. So we're not going right to the edge of the letter. And we come same distance and then walk it up. We want to come about not quite halfway up the letter. So a little float, a little space and not quite halfway up. And this is going to create sort of a shaded effect at the bottom of the letters. How do the gift certificates work? When you use them on the website, all you have to do is put whatever you want into your shopping cart and when you go to checkout, there is a button there that will give you gift certificate as an option for the checkout as the method of payment. Or how, if you were ordering them. Oh, order. simple. Um, you just put them in your cart. We have them as a product on the website. You just put them in your cart. And then uh, when you check out, there's a space where you can put the information for the person that you want them to go to. The postage to have them sent to your recipient is included in the cost of the, of the certificate. If you want to have them sent directly to you, we can do that as well. It will just ask you for some information about who you want it sent to. And it's essentially a coupon code. No, it works just like. Yeah, they got to punch in the code that no. you provide. No. They just, when they check out, they put gift certificate as the, as the method of payment. Yeah, but how do they confirm that? How much is on that? I'm, I'm curious because that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> oh, why the way I have it set up on there is when they purchase it, it, we have a database that tells us which, who it's going to and how much it's worth. Yeah, but if they're using it on the website. Yeah, there's going to be a number on that. Okay. So yeah. That's what I was asking. Yeah. They just have to type in the, the coupon code number. That's what I was wondering. Okay. I made it as simple as possible. If you wanted to give someone a free month membership, is it possible? With, uh... We were trying to figure that out. And as it stands right now, um, YouTube doesn't really give us that option. Yeah. So. It's a pain in the butt. It's a pain in the butt. We're kind of hoping they're going to fix that. Um, uh, if you know how to get YouTube gift certificates. Yeah, you can do it that way. <laughs> you can do it that way. If you can find them. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube gift certificates are hen's teeth. Yeah, YouTube does not have an easy way of, of doing that. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid. Um, currently, YouTube is working on... A project it's right now it's in testing with the video game industry yeah. with video game streamers um, they're testing out a subscription gift yeah so a subscriber can gift another subscriber a membership but it hasn't reached out to it isn't in full yeah. yeah. So we've got our darker shading at the bottom of the letters. Now we're going to use the yellow at the top 
and it's the same process you're just going down as opposed to up so just float a little of that color in again leave that little space and then you're going to let that color walk down to not quite halfway and so what it creates is this nice little glow on the top of the letters oh what happens if you don't use all the amount on the gift certificate um unfortunately there's no way for us to categorize it so we'll give you we give you some grace you know a couple of dollars in each direction that's the, the best that we can do at this point mm -hmm. but the certificate itself has no cash value so we give you a little bit of grace we tried to figure it out so that based on the average order so that we're not people aren't getting stuck with not being able to use as much of it as they can and not having to pay extra. So, uh, you know, we've tried to keep it as... It's not a gift card. It's not a gift card. Yeah, so we can't keep a running total of how much it's worth, but we've tried to put them in increments so that people are... Yeah, 25. Can use them as, you know, as close to the total amount as possible. 25 bucks goes quick on her website. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> You can get a lot of stuff for 25 bucks on your website, too. That's true. But Whether it's stencils or yep. pens, patterns. And, you know, we always make sure that there's a little extras tucked in, too. I right. mean, I like to make sure people get their money's worth, so. I'm pretty sure it would not be hard to spend it all. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But we, we have tried to make it as convenient as possible so so I've done the same thing in the other direction using a little bit of that sunny day and come not quite so you have a little bit of white there in between the two and it gives these a nice little glow nice. now if you like me hit a couple of spots where you know perhaps you're not absolutely thrilled or you've gone over the edge a little bit and you want to clean it up, you can just take your rigger and a little of your base color, which is that lamp black, and you can clean it up. Because, you know, I'm wobbly enough today that I've actually gotten yellow onto my background. So I want to clean that up and get it nice and nice and dark. Mm -hmm. So a little stroke of lamp black back there will clean it up really neatly. I can use that plus some. <laughs> There wouldn't be leftovers. <laughs> no. no, we'll make sure that you're well taken care of. Is it possible to use it as a partial payment on a total? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Like I said, there'll be a little code in there that you can use. Code number. Yep. Like $25 on a $40 purchase? Yep. Yep, absolutely. That's, that's the whole point of them. Yep. Turn your $40 purchase into a $15 purchase. Yep. And uh, when we send them out, we, we have a little note attached to them with the instructions on how to use it. So, there we go. I've cleaned up a few little bubbles there that I wasn't happy with. <laughs> So now we're going to tackle that little bit of lettering at the top. And this one is super easy because it's just Bahama Blue. And I'm loading up my rigger with a little bit of Joe Sonia's and some Bahama Blue. And it makes a milky. And I'm going to start at the top of this F. Press down to open it up and then come back up onto the chisel edge down to that point. Just like so. 
When are your new patterns coming out? They should be up and I'm hoping by tomorrow. The new group patterns are already up. If you are a member of the group and you haven't seen them yet, you can download them from the uh, paid membership group link at the top page, top of the website. And just click on that link and it'll take you right to your download. If you're a member and you haven't been able to access that section of my website, send me a quick message and we will make sure that you get access. It's just a matter of us um, turning it on for you. <laughs> Let's see how the gods treat us today. <laughs> He's spinning his little wheelie thing again. Oh my god, there's a lot of names in that thing. Yep. <laughs> That's Facebook and YouTube. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh oh. Sue Potts <laughs> is our winner of our second gift certificate. Sue Potts. There it is. I'm pretty sure we got your information somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I think Sue, I think we have your information already. So um, we will get that out in the mail to you first thing Monday morning. Sorry, Linda, you were right under her. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Sofranco was right under her. Yeah, it was almost you, but it ticked right over. <laughs> Just, well, I missed it by that much. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, um, I've just stroked in the, the word fresh with a little bit of thinned Bahama blue. And I'm going to make sure this is good and dry because I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And we are ready to start painting our mug. <laughs> Linda, that's my luck. <laughs> now, we have a butterfly that goes on this piece. And I intentionally left it off because I wanted to go over top of the stenciling. I didn't want to have to try and stencil around it. And so I left that separate. And I left it separate for another reason. So that if you decide that you want it in a different location, you can put that in there wherever you want. Now, I chose blue. For my butterfly, I initially put it off to the left, but I'm thinking this one is going to go over here. Um, but then the more I look at it, it puts all of the visual weight on this side. So let's stick to keeping our butterfly over there. <laughs> and But I think I'm going to change his direction. I'm going to put him down, facing down a little bit. What did you thin the BB with? It's BB. The what? The BB. BB. Mm. What did you thin the BB with? I oh, the Bahama Blue? Just uh, a little bit of... Um... That makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just thinned it with a little bit of the Joe Sonia. So now I'm just going to trace this butterfly on. There we go. And I'm going to base coat this little bugger with some Bahama Blue. Great. Maybe Linda can get this painting, hint, hint, ha, ha. <laughs> and who hint, hinted at that? Robin Storm. Oh. <laughs> Even bad luck is better than no luck? Uh, what? I don't know. I think I'd rather have no luck than bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
you know, the, the computing gods were not on my side this week. <laughs> Was it? Anything you, to do with you, electronics you nearly, this week was just forget it. And you nearly deleted an entire pattern. I know. That was just, <laughs> I hit something. I went to hit the back button to eliminate an extra page, and instead of getting rid of the page, the entire pattern disappeared off my screen. I had two or three minutes of profanity and nearly in tears, and then mm -hmm. I realized I just have to hit the undo button. Mm -hmm. Which I did, and the whole pattern came back, but it's like, oh my god. That's the kind of week it's been. So, I just, I put a base coat of Bahama Blue on my flutter by. And as I was base coating this, I realized that one wing is bigger than the other on my, I just quickly sketched it out, so. Uh, one wing is bigger than the other, so I had to fix that. Call it first perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to take a little bit of the lamp black. And I'm just going to stroke in the body a little bit. And the head. Control Z has <laughs> saved my bacon more times than I can say. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, today was one of those. I've had a few of those days this week. It's just, you know. No, no, no. Had way too many things. The capper, though, was my oven yesterday. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that was the, I'm done. I am so done this week. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm done. Uh, There's the cherry on top for the week. Yeah. I, we went to cook the pizza last night and <laughs> put it in the oven and then 45 minutes later I'm realizing like wait a minute how come my 20 minute pizza is still not cooked and I reached into the oven which the oven was telling me that it was heated to 325 degrees and I could pick up the pan with my bare hands <laughs> <laughs> it's like nope <laughs> it's like what the hell else can go wrong don't tempt fate, for God's sake. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my butterfly is base coated blue. Now I'm going to shade this, the wings on this butterfly, with some Prussian blue, because I love Prussian blue. And it looks really good with Bahama blue. But we need it very transparent. It's a strong color, so I'm going to thin it out quite a bit. And I'm going to take that gorgeous blue right close to the body. And I want to come out about one third of the way onto the wings. Don't putz with it. Just put it in there. Oh, it works. The stove works fine now. Yeah, my it's like anything else, you know, unplug it, plug it back in. <laughs> so far, so good. Turn it off, turn it on. Yeah. Washing machine, we had to use the... Um, the rescue restart to get it going this week and oh really yeah just so yeah so it's things are working they're just not working as at optimal but oh bad luck comes in threes yep wash machine computer and stove oh no you had scanner printer i had scanner printer i mean if it had if it was electric it just yeah. Wasn't going well this week. <laughs> so I'm going to dry this. I like it when it's got a nice dark shading towards the center of the body. It gives the butterfly some nice shape. So that's nice and dark. Now I'm going to take a little bit of warm white. And we're going to highlight the tips of these wings with the warm white. Did Renee starve last night? Renee never starves. No. I used the air fryer. I just cut the pizza up into pieces and stuck it in the air fryer. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> it worked. It heated it up and it <laughs> gave it a nice crunch on the top. So it did the job. That was cool. 
not the way I want to do them all the time, <laughs> but you know, it, it saved us. And we had wings as well. So and we, were... we did chicken wings in the air fryer, so we were good. So I put a little bit of white, warm white, on the edges of these wings, like so. Maybe you just replace the element on the oven. I seems to be working just fine now. Yeah, I don't think it's the element. I think it was just a. I think it's ghosts in the machine. Yeah, it was a small computer glitch and. Yep. Resetting it, fixed it. So. Yep. For now, we'll see. So far, so good. But I think it's just been a week of that, and I think it's. I don't know. They had been warning us all last week that we could see issues. <laughs> don't ever ask what else. Yeah, because somebody might answer. Yeah. Uh, I did that the other day. I walked outside, twisted my ankle, fell, hit the concrete. Oh, no. <laughs> tore up my knee. I don't ask what else. <laughs> well, I hope you're okay. Okay. So... Butterfly's got highlights on the tips and points of the wings, nice little shadow along the body. And now we're just going to add a few little details to her. I'm going to use my liner brush and I'm going to pick up some titanium white. Facebook's quiet. Or warm white, just some white, whatever happens to be on the palette, really. And I like doing dots and threes. It's just how I do them. So I've got some dots on my wings. And I'm going to thin this out a little bit. And we're going to put a highlight on the body of our butterfly, like so. One on the head, and then we're going to just stroke in antenna. Like that. Ta-da! Simple butterfly. We're not going to really do a whole lot to it. So that brings us to this mug. And this is going to work up surprisingly quick. Uh, I'm going to switch to a half-inch angled shader. I want a nice wide float for this one. Lots of water in my brush. And we're going to start with a highlight on our jar. I'm going to use some warm white and I'm going to thin it out quite a bit because I don't want this fully opaque. We want this to be a nice transparent float and it's going to come right down here on the neck of that bottle and then it's going to come down the side of the jar like so. Oh, that's right. Oops. And then along the top of the liquid right here, right over the straw, and then again at the top of the liquid over here on the back of the bottle. And that one goes in behind the straw. <laughs> my hubby used to tell everyone that he hides my Christmas presents in the oven because I'd never find them in there. <laughs> Okie dokie then. All right. Don't use the oven much. And then I'm going to put another highlight back here. Coming up the back side of that jar, like so. <laughs> and then up the back. Where's everybody going? Like that. And now the fun part, because I just ended up wiping off my float right there. <laughs> <laughs> now the fun part, what? Doing it again! Because I pooched it. There we go. Okay, so I put a float down this side and a float down the back side because we need to have a highlight on both sides. It is glass. So this, this part goes very quickly. We're going to load up that liner brush with uh, Bahama Blue and lots of the Joe Sonia's or water. You want it really nice and thin for this next part. 
we're going to paint in all these little details. You can see them in the line drawing. <laughs> Deb. I have a kitchen because it came with the house. Yep. You don't cook? Not very much. Huh? Nope. So, Bahama Blue, we're going to put in these little wonky little bubbly things. I don't know what else to call them. These are just reflections. And these get painted solid Bahama Blue. All of those funky little details that are outlined in your line drawing, those get painted Bahama Blue. Just like this little line that comes straight down through the straw all the way to the bottom and then curves like so, that's Bahama Blue. And then there's another one right next to it. That comes down just like that. So you should be able to see that straw right between them. Now all of these little details in here get that Bahama Blue. And these are just those little baubles in the glass. So as the light is passing through them, this is sort of has that more of a graphic quality than a painted quality. So it's not going to, no heavy details really. So there's a whole bunch of these little bobbly things in there. And I missed one over here. Sheila, I made homemade bagels this morning and I'm making a Chicago style deep dish pizza in my cast iron skillet for supper. Uh -huh. Where is Sheila? <laughs> Matigan. So all of those little baubles get painted in with that Bahama blue. It doesn't take very long to do this because you don't have to worry too much about them being crisp and tidy because they're just wobbles in the glass, basically. It's just where the light is passing through. So neatness doesn't really count for this part. And we have a few down here at the bottom. You want to be careful telling him you're making pizza, Sheila, especially Chicago-style Chicago deep yeah, dish. Yeah, no kidding. He'll be on the first friggin' ferry over to Digby. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I could smell it, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> uh, Corso just attacked the UPS guy. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Not a bad thing. Just happy to see him. I wanted to say hi. We have a FedEx guy that stops on his route to come and see Dot. Yeah. <laughs> he sees her outside. He stops to come and visit. Give her pets. Give her pets. He usually has cookies or something in his pocket. So. He just loves Miss Dot. I think I'm making homemade chili tonight. Ooh. Chili's good. Chili's I'm good. making shepherd's pie. European chili with taters. <laughs> European chili? 
Nö, das ist ja nicht bei. Ah. So. A New York Pizza. Mm. Oof. A New York Slice? A New York Slice is different than a Chicago Deep Dish. Oh, by far. By far. I like a New York Slice as a snack. Yep. New York Chicago. Deep Dish to fill me up as a meal. Chicago Deep Dish. Chicago, uh, yeah. Chicago Deep Dish. Sorry. So, all of these little details in here, in this jar, get filled in with that Bahama Blue. And it's fun because it just, it implies glass. It's not super realistic. We're not going for super realistic. But it does give you a nice sense of the glass. I like how this looks. <laughs> Keith calls it pizza casserole. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's... Keith's a valley oh, boy. Somebody's making venison stew. <gasps> Yummy. So once you have all of those little things filled in, I've got a, a couple of up top here that I need to fill in. More little details. Drive safe, Jessica. I'll still be listening, but I have to drive dropping out of the comments. Thank you for the great class today. See you all next Saturday. So I have all of my little details filled in. So now we have to focus a little bit on some of the bigger elements. So there's these two bars at the top of the jar. Again, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue for that, but I'm switching to a rigger so that I can fill that in a little easier. Oh. See, I'm talking about food, guys. Now all he's thinking about well, is Well, they mentioned stomach. the real shepherd's pie with lamb. Yeah. With ground lamb. Mmm. Mm. Yum, yum. Renee, you and your dad will have your own goodie boxes. What? <laughs> so we don't have to share? <laughs> so now when I'm painting in these bars, this is where you come over top of that straw. It's going to set that straw back inside the jar. That is definitely a great pregame meal. Mac and cheese with salad and mm -hmm. an apple crisp. Yum. That sounds good. Just before a hockey game. That sounds good for anything. Are you playing hockey or are you watching hockey? If you're playing, that's great because you're going to have tons of energy. If you're watching, you're going to have a nap. <laughs> 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 okay, so I've got my bars in. I'm going to dry this real quick, and we're going to finish this, the, the bulk of this off uh, just with some fine lines, and we are going to do a little bit of dry brushing to put the lemonade in, but this works up really super quick. So we're back to my fine liner. And I'm thinning out some more Bahama Blue, and this is where we get to connect the dots. So I'm going to outline this jar with some Bahama Blue, just like so, so that we connect all of those little patches that we just spent so much time filling in, so that that jar is got a nice 
fine edge to it. We don't want a hard edge, but it needs to have a fine edge. Oh. So this is where I clean that up. It's a good chili and Mexican cornbread day. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Is that cornbread with how many or with jalapenos and cheese? I think so. Mm. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh -uh. You got the sweet and the spicy in there. Mm -hmm. mm, that would be tasty. Yep. So there I put my fine line in. That gives me that nice edge on the glass. And it gives me a nice, nice outline on my pitcher. And I'm going to do all these little details down here, those little lines that indicate the, the curve in the bottom of the the jar. Those are also done with a little bit of um, thinned Bahama blue because I want that nice flow. Then I'm going to switch to my warm white. And this is where we get to put in some highlights on our jar. We need to have some on these highlights at the neck right here. Again, they're just a stroke of warm white. And you just highlight some of those little areas along the jar with a thin stroke of warm white. And this just gives you a nice highlight, accentuates that glass look. Don't forget, you need them at the top on these ridges. It's a different take on shepherd's pie. And then we're going to put some highlights on the edge of that lemonade back there. And we have to go over the straw when we do this, this part. Oh, soup and Irish soda bread. Hmm. Irish soda bread is so good. That's, Especially with that, fresh that, cranberry that, butter. That's a you thing. Yeah, it is a me thing. Uh, I'm not a big fan of very dense breads. Oh, I love Irish Yet soda love bread. Yeah, love cornbread. Yeah. <laughs> so there's our highlight. Don't forget, you got to have that highlight on your, on your jar. I like to pull one inside here, on the outside edge of that handle. And now we've got to dry brush our lemonade. I'm going to do that with a little bit of warm white. And I'm going to pick up just a tiny, tiny bit of that sunny day. And the brush has to be almost perfectly dry. And we're just going to put a very light dry brush on the top of the liquid. And it's going to form sort of a little V coming down into the middle of the jar. Just like that. And there we have our lemonade. There's a different take on shepherd's pie. Instead of a gravy, use uh, cream of mushroom soup. I've had that. I like the gravy. Yeah. Yeah. That's my preference anyway. Yeah. So there we have it, guys. I'm just going to dry brush a little more highlight onto that jar. Just to give it a little more body. But that's it. That's our lemonade, our fresh lemonade. I managed to smear. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going um, to fix this because I made a mess. Sorry. I think the only liner brush you used today was that 50 knot, right? It's the one I use the most. Yeah. I use the liner, that 50 knot, and I use my rigger. And I have to, I smeared my dip dots, so I have to clean that up because I made a mess. Meat is so expensive. When's the last time you bought a package of bacon? Uh, it's been a couple months. <laughs> it's been a couple months. 
<laughs> it's because we make bacon. No, I make my own. Yeah, she makes her own bacon. With pork belly. Yep, I bought oh. a whole pork belly and cut it all up into reasonable sized chunks and then um, I marinated it for eight days. Yeah. And then smoked it. And then put it in the smoker. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. So, from this point on, this is where I break out my Uniball Signo. I love this pen. And I put nice little sketchy lines around all of the details. So, around the lemon wedges. This is just a me thing. I love this. I like the little the sketchiness of it. The It sort of has that hand-drawn effect. So, nice loose line around each segment. little sketchy line in the middle. This just appeals to me. I do the same thing to all over the lemons. And I'm going to do the same thing to the butterfly and to those flowers because I really like how this looks. It adds a little bit of visual texture to it. It softens it up, gives it a bit more of a hand-drawn or hand-designed look to it. So it's not so... I don't know. It just This just appeals to me. So I like that little bit of sketchy detail on my flowers. Keep it light. I like the fact that this pen is so fine that I can do this kind of thing. It doesn't look heavy-handed and it doesn't look coarse. Apparently Robin Storm's coming over to eat. Is he? Yeah. Come on over, Robin. <laughs> Mom's not cooking tonight. <laughs> What was that supposed to be? <laughs> Mom's not cooking tonight. Well, like you not. starve. Hmm. No, I am not cooking. Saturday is not my night to cook. The boys cook for us on Saturday nights. Which is a new thing. Yeah. But I'm not complaining. So I'm going to... This is what I like doing around the butterfly. I like to do this sort of really ragged, rough, sketchy line around the edges of the of the wings. I don't know if you can see that clearly. I don't have autofocus on, so it's okay. gonna... Okay. <laughs> it's, it's just literally a scribbly little line. No, it doesn't show up on camera. I was hoping it would, but it doesn't. I, and I overlap it so that it gives you a nice soft edge to these... I almost said petals. <laughs> Bunny leaves. Bunny leaves um, to the wings of this butterfly. So it's a very scribbly line. And then I just add a few little details right at the junction where they join the body. Just a few little lines like so. Just gives the butterfly a softness. And it's not so um, not so harsh. The lines are soft and fine. That's why I like this Uniball Signo. And so I just have one more little thing to finish out, and that's this wedge inside our lemonade. Again, I'm just using very light, sketchy lines, nothing elaborate. A few little lines for detail. Keep it simple. And that's it for our piece. You can do the same thing to the straw if you want to, just to give it perhaps a bit more dimension. That's fine too. Oh, Karen's off. Yep. She says, Doc, do chat with you soon. So there is our piece. Now, I left the stenciling to these corners till the very end because I was actually considering going to a smaller stencil. Mm. But um, now that I look at it... It's pretty empty. It, it, it might be. But let's try it anyway. So I've just got a stencil brush and a little bit of warm white. 
Now, the, the handy thing is, is that this stencil already has a nice little border on it, which is a good width to um, space with. So I've just lined it up on the corner and a little bit of warm white on my stencil brush. Light touch, circular fashion, change directions frequently. Okay, it works. And I'm just going to put that same design in all four corners. Again, nice light touch. Warm white gives us a little contrast. All you need is one coat. Doesn't have to be fully opaque, but if it is, that's great. It's just that white on top of that darker tone. But Facebook might kick us off. <laughs> Are we going over the order? Minimum? Maximum? The maximum time limit, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to quick this up. <laughs> so... We're going on three hours. Are we really? Wow. Yeah. A little bit longer than usual. Yeah. That's okay. YouTube doesn't care. No, YouTube doesn't care. <laughs> YouTube doesn't care. Facebook does, apparently. Yeah. Or Meta. What do you want to call it? So, there is my stencil detail in the corner. Oh, it's a cute set. So, yeah, I don't mind that. So, uh, the two stencils that I used is the half inch check, and I used this one's the Elegant Corners. This one is M263, and this one is M237. Those are the two stencils that I used for this piece. And that is it. Bob's your Uncle Sally's your aunt. Only thing left to do is to clean up all of those graphite lines. You can do that with that Factus Brac eraser. I love this eraser for this. It'll clean it up. It doesn't damage your paint. doesn't damage anything else. You don't get any shiny spots, but it does take your white graphite off very easily and cleanly without making a mess of your paint finish. So if you're looking for a great eraser for your uh, decorative painting, that's it. That fact is black eraser. I love that thing. Yay, face cam. There we go. Ooh. So it took us a bit long, but that's okay. It was a fun piece to paint. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. Um, I know because I've painted it twice in the last two days. So <laughs> <laughs> you painted it twice in the last two days? Twice in the last two days, yeah. Where's the original? Uh, right here. So why'd you paint it's the twice? original? Well, because when I painted it the first time, I forgot to take step-by-step -step photos. Oh. So I had to paint it again <laughs> to take the step-by-step -step photos. But, but that was okay, though, because it made me rethink the design a little bit. And uh, I'm actually happier with the end result. So, um, right. And I got really nice step-by-steps. <laughs> so I'm happy with that, too. Uh. Facebook just gave us a one minute warning. Okay, so with that in <laughs> mind, I'm gonna say goodbye. You guys have been great as always. Love you lots, please stay safe. We'll see you again next Saturday. Mwah. Bye.